May this video be a spark of light and guidance on your path. Together, we can create a chain of love that permeates all dimensions of existence. Isn't it fantastic that if there's no purpose, you have nothing to fulfill, you can just live? Hmm? No, but you want a purpose and not a simple purpose, you want a God-given purpose. <laughs> it's very dangerous. People who think they have a God-given purpose are doing the cruelest things on the planet. Yes or no? They are doing the most horrible things and they've always been doing the most horrible things. Because when you have a God-given purpose, life here becomes less important than your purpose. No, life is important. Life is important. When I say life, I am not talking about your family, your work, what you do, what you do not do, your party. I am not talking about that as life. This is life, isn't it? Life is within you or around you? The… the ambience of life, you are mistaking the ambience of life for life. Your home, your family, your workspace, your party, this is all ambience of life. This is not life, isn't it? Yes or no? You are mistaking the ambience for the real thing, no. Life is important because it's the only thing you know, you don't know anything else. Do you know something else? Rest is all imagined stuff, isn't it? The only thing is that this is beating and alive and that's all there is. So is this important? It is of paramount importance. Not you as a person, that's not important. But you as a piece of life, it's very important because that is the basis of everything. When I say that is the basis of everything, the universe exists for you only because you are, isn't it? Yes or no? The world exists for you only because you are, otherwise it wouldn't exist in your experience. So, in every way this is important. So what is the purpose for this? See, if you had a purpose and if you fulfilled it, after that what would you do? After that, what would you do? Bored, isn't it? It is just that life is so intricate and so phenomenally intricate that if you spend a ten thousand years looking at it carefully, you still will not know it entirely. If you spend a million years looking at it with absolute focus, still you will not know it in its entirety. That's how it is. There is… is there a meaning to it? The greatest thing about life is that there is no meaning to it. This is the greatest aspect of life, that it has no meaning to it and there is no need for it to have a meaning. It is the pettiness of one's mind that it is seek a meaning because psychologically you will feel kind of unconnected with life if you don't have a purpose and a meaning. People are tr constantly trying to create these false purposes. Now they were quite fine and happy, suddenly they got married, now the purpose is the other person. Then they have children, now they become miserable with each other, now the whole purpose that I go through all this misery is because of the children. Like this it goes on. These are things that you are causing and holding these as purposes of life. And is there a God-given purpose? What if God does not know you exist? No, I'm just asking by chance <laughs> I'm saying in this huge cosmos for which God is supposed to be the creator and the manager of this hundred billion galaxies, in that this tiny little planet and you, suppose he doesn't know that you exist, what to do? <laughs> possible or no? I'm sorry, I'm saying such sacrilegious things, but is it possible or no? 
What if he doesn't know that you exist? What if he doesn't have a plan for you? <laughs> Suppose he doesn't have a plan for you, an individual plan for you. Don't look for such things. The thing is, the creation is made in such a way that creation and creator cannot be separated. Here you are a piece of creation, at the same time the source of creation is throbbing within you. If you pay little attention to this process of life, you would not need any purpose, it'll keep you engaged for a million years if you want. There is so much happening. So much means so much unbelievable things are happening right here. If you pay enough attention, a million years of existence, it'll keep you busy or more. Right now the need for purpose has come because you're trapped in your psychological structure, not in your life process. Psychologically, your, your psychological structure functions from the limited data that it has gathered. Within that, it rolls and right now, your thought and emotion has become far more important than your life, isn't it so? Isn't it so? So because of this, you are seeking a purpose as an escape from the trap that you have set for yourself. It is a trap set by you. You can easily come out of it. If the trap was set for you by somebody else, difficult to come out because they'll set the trap in such a way that you cannot come out, isn't it? I'm… I'm talking about life, not marriage, that's what I'm… <laughs> that's what <laughs> So this is a trap set by you. This is easy to come out, but that is the whole thing. Why it is so difficult is, now you're identified with the trap, you like it. You like it because it gives you a certain sense of uh, safety and security and protection and individual identity. If you build a cocoon around yourself, it gives you safety but it also imprisons you. Walls of self-preservation are also walls of self-imprisonment. When it protects you, you like it. When it restricts you, you do not like it. That is why we have doors. We like the walls because it's protecting us. But we have doors so that we can open it and get out when we want to. It doesn't matter how nice it is, we still want to go out, isn't it? So that is how it is with every trap that you set. It doesn't matter how nice it is, you still want to go out. So the psychological wall that you have built, which gives you some sense of identity, which gives you some sense of being a person, an individual person and which gives you security, beginning to experience it like a trap, somewhere you want to break it. So one way of not breaking it is to find a purpose. Those who find a purpose in their life, they become so conceited. They will live within their own trap forever, thinking that they're doing the most fantastic thing. First thing you need is balance. If you have balance, then you can climb. If you don't have balance, it's better you stay on the ground, isn't it? It's not safe for somebody who is not balanced to climb high. It's best you stay close to the ground, you should not climb. So, first thing is to establish a balance, then you loosen your psychological structure. Then it's a wonderful thing. If you lose in your psychological structure without balance, which a lot of people are doing today, see why does somebody want to drink alcohol or take a drug? Because it loosens your psychological structure and makes you feel liberated for a moment. But without the necessary balance, you have not worked for the balance but you got freedom. Freedom without balance is destruction, anarchy, isn't it? So first thing is to work for balance, an enormous sense of balance where even if you dismantle your psychological structure, you can simply live here. Dismantling your psychological structure is an important process because that is your trap. 
That is your security, that is your stability, at the same time that's your trap. Because the walls are set, you feel secure, but that's also your trap. If you dismantle your trap, you also dismantle your security, isn't it? You also dismantle your sense of purpose, you also dismantle everything that matters to you. So that will need balance. Without balance if you dismantle, you will go crazy. But don't look for a purpose because if you look for a purpose, you're seeking madness. If you find one, you are sure mad. Yes. If you think you found a purpose in life, you still… you, you for sure gone crazy. Because only the insane people have purpose. Or people who have purpose are insane in many ways. These are things that you create in your mind and believe it's true, isn't it? Right now fighting for my country is my purpose. Right now if it's necessary I will fight. Knowing fully well, it's an unnecessary bloody fight. Yes? Then you will fight only to the extent it's necessary. If you think this is your purpose, you would want to destroy the whole world for what nonsense you believe in, isn't it? Something is needed, we'll do it with, with absolute involvement. There's no other purpose. The purpose of life is to live and to live totally. To live totally does not mean party every night. To live totally means before you fall dead, every aspect of life has been explored, nothing has been left unexplored. Yes? Before you fall dead, even if you do not explore the cosmos, at least this piece of life you must know it in its entirety. That much you must do to yourself, isn't it? That's living totally, that you experience the whole of this, all dimensions of what this is, you did not leave anything untouched. You just do that, that will take a long time, that's enough, good enough purpose for you. <laughs> turn around once, just turn around, just turn around, turn around. <laughs> see, all of you see what's written on his t-shirt, yeah. yeah, that's where you start, A. Hey. Don't start with Z, A. You must start with A. A means it's a beginning, isn't it? So where should you start? Does it happen in stages? Where should you start? I think we've been repeatedly saying you can only start from where you are. You cannot start somewhere else. Don't try to start anywhere. There's nothing to start. It's already long ago it's been started. You are trying to just hasten it, that's all. You can't start it, it's already started. Your longing to grow has started, isn't it? Maybe you're thinking of more money, but that's only your misunderstanding. But essentially, you want to be something more. That's a spiritual process, misguided, but a spiritual process. You want to become powerful, you want to become rich, you want to become knowledgeable, you want to be loved, you want to have pleasure, all these are spiritual processes going in wrong directions, that's all. Unconscious conducting of… you're unconsciously conducting a spiritual process. If you conduct anything unconsciously, you may flounder every step maybe off the mark isn't it? If you walk, now if I tell you, dry home with your eyes closed, before you get out of the parking lot, you'll be in quite a bit of mess, isn't it? So now, don't try to start anywhere, just become more and more conscious. As you become more conscious, it will naturally find its way. To be conscious, to be aware, what it means. If you try to be aware, you cannot be aware. People are always mistaking mental alertness for awareness.
mental alertness will enhance your ability to survive better. You can survive better with mental alertness. But uh, that is not awareness. Awareness means, right now are you here, right now? Yes. Do you know that you are here? Yes. That's awareness. You are aware, that's why you know that you are here. Otherwise you would not know. Suppose you… you do not know that you are here, isn't it? If somebody… you know. So someone is dead, poke, no awareness. Someone is asleep, poke, immediately there. Now you don't have to be poked, still you are there. So what I am saying is your awareness anyway is coming in different stages. Have you noticed at different times of the day you are in different levels of awareness? Hmm? So it can be heightened. What is needed for survival naturally happens. Even when it comes to survival mode, not every individual is alert to the same extent. Now you are driving on the street, not everybody is alert to the same extent, it's a survival process driving. But not everybody is alert to the same extent. So even in the survival mode, not everybody is alert to the same extent and that can be heightened. If you heighten this awareness continuously, a point will come it's where it's no more about survival. Something that is not needed for your survival will also come into your awareness. When that comes into your awareness, that which is not needed for your survival is bound to be a dimension beyond the physical. So when that comes into your living experience of life, you are on. Very simple, those seven days, what we were doing with you is slowly wind you up, wind you up, wind you up in such a way that you become more and more aware. Suddenly after five, six days you were like… After that if you kept up your pro practice, gradually it'll move up every day. Otherwise slowly you became dim once again. Have you noticed this? You steadily keep up your practice, how your awareness is, you give it up and slowly, voltage is going down. If voltage goes down, the light becomes dim. Light becomes dim, you see very few things. The voltage is really high, light becomes really bright and you see everything. This is awareness. So you don't work on your awareness or your consciousness or your spiritual growth, you just work upon your voltage. You keep your energies up as much as possible and when energies are up, you tend to get entangled with something. You make sure you don't get entangled with anything. See, an adolescent is far more energetic than other people, but he is always getting into trouble because he has the energy but he doesn't have the stability. So to have the energy and to maintain the stability, if you do the, the, these two things if you do, Rest will happen by itself, nothing to do, simply sit and enjoy. Sadhguru, our mothers have set amazing benchmark. In the moment you say mothers, yeah. they're giving a sound ambience of babies crying. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's the halo effect, I think. Yeah, so they've set a quite a big benchmark of being an ideal wife. However, I, or girls of my generation, feel that we cannot be as good as wife as my mother has been or our mothers have been. So should I feel that I am falling short of my… in my personal life or should I feel that I'm not giving enough justice to my marriage once I'm married? How should I feel about this? You know, our center in the United States is in Tennessee. Tennessee is a little one kind of state, okay. Mary Makowski, that's not Romanian, right? Okay. Mary Makowski got married and uh, after their honeymoon they came home and uh, she threatened him that she's going to make a dinner all by herself. I'm sorry, she… Uh, <laughs> she said she'll make dinner for the new husband. 
And husband came home from work and she served the dinner and he put it in his mouth and slowly he was chewing on it and went into profound thought. Then she was very excited about this dinner and she said, the only two things my mother taught me how to cook, the meatloaf and the apple pie. Then he looked at her and said, darling, which one is this? <laughs> so, your mother, your grandmother, how they made good wives, largely it was believed the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Uh, today your husband uh, will call uh, Uber Eats and uh, <laughs> whatever quick picks and this and that and swiggies and whatever, all right <laughs> So, you can't make a good wife based on how your grandmother became a good wife. You can't become a good wife based on how your mother became a good wife. Situations have changed, expectations have changed. Hmm? It's not in the stomach anymore. For some it's gone up into the head, for some it's gone further south <laughs> Yes? So, you don't uh, do that. Essentially, what a husband and wife means is, because you're not geared, most people are not geared, very few people in this world are geared, to make this journey a life all by themselves. They're organized enough within themselves totally. They never feel anything missing in their life because they've made themselves like that. But most people need somebody else to lean on. Either emotionally, psychologically, there are needs in a human being, physical needs, psychological needs, emotional needs, maybe social needs, economic needs, variety of needs. To fulfill these needs, you want to find one person that you can depend on because it's very difficult even to find one person who… with whom you can share everything that you have, your body, mind, emotion and works. So this is the idea. Formalizing it is so that every time you get little… some little friction, you don't fall apart, so little tying up so that things don't fall apart very easily, all right? Nothing else. The biggest mistake humanity made was, they started saying marriages are made in heaven, that's why it's such a mess <laughs> What's it's done here. If you see, marriages are made between us and we took responsibility for who we are, how oh, we could have made it work, but the damn thing is made in heaven. <laughs> Not suitable here, it's because it's an alien stuff. Everything is a mess because you think it's made elsewhere by somebody else. If you understand it's made by you for your well-being, to fulfill your needs and your purposes so that you can go through this journey of life with least amount of trouble and friction, then you would handle it more responsibly, isn't it? And according to contemporary needs, not how your grandmother did her marriage, you can't do it that way because expectations and situations have completely altered themselves. So, if you hold somebody, who is your friend and who is your need, you must understand. You are in this relationship because you need. Maybe the other person also needs but that's from their side. As far as you are concerned, you made this relationship because you need it badly, isn't it? If you understand and you're always grateful for this, that somebody is fulfilling all your need, you would handle it well. You wouldn't make a misery out of it. But now you think somebody else needs you, then you will make a mess out of it. You understand, you need it. Well, the other person also needs to understand, he needs it. Now there is a cohesion. If you think, oh, you need me, so I'm going to exploit you. No, this is not about you squeezing happiness out of somebody or they squeezing happiness out of you. If two happy people meet, then there can be something wonderful happening between them. But you are a misery and you think somebody else should be the source of your happiness, well, it'll multiply <laughs>
Let's spread light throughout the world.